Hello, YouTubers and all those who happen to watch. Hope you're all doing quite well. Nonetheless, I just blinded myself. So, this video itself is going to pertain to collecting as a whole, at least the, the value of our games that have unfortunately increased. Uh, both, I guess, positively if you have to pay a bill to unfortunately if you're trying to collect for the freaking games. Now, this is more of a whining aggravation video as a mixture of that and as well as an intellectual video if I can even make it that, if that's even going to work through this cranium. So, alright. Most games nowadays, they usually drop in price. And I'm talking about modern games. I'm talking about games such as, and not shy to, Dragon Age Inquisition or whatever else. Now, these, these games just drop down in price. It doesn't matter. They just they go down pretty much the value of them are just almost minuscule, or minuscule, excuse me, versus what they used to be, or at least the price of value of games used to be, because most of these games depend on the multiplayer-based connection to have uh, the full beneficial properties of these said games. Sure, you probably still play a single player and have a good time, but if you want the whole experience, it's cut in half. Now some people are going to see, that's what I've been talking about, that's what I've been talking about. Hmm, not necessarily. It also varies from the popularity of the games too. Like for example, if I can look for it on my shelf here, it's probably on the shelf, oh there it is. Uh, Call of Duty games. Such as... Getting it. I'm getting it, don't worry. Games such as Modern Warfare 3 here. Yes, now much more recently it has indeed dropped down in price. I'm make sure this one's, it's probably my system. But um, yeah, basically drops down very lightly but then still keeps its value because it still has a multiplayer concept that a lot of people pertain to and enjoy and play. So therefore people are still playing this one. Which is sort of a weird thing, right? You expect a game such as this because there's a multiplayer aspect to also drop down in price, but it does over time, but not quite as quickly. So the price of it still stays up steadily. Now you're taking notes of that. Yeah, it's common practice. The game's popular by demand, so it circulates, and therefore um, the value of it stays up. Now let's look at older games such as Layer Section here or Galactic Attack here on the Sega Saturn. Now this game went for about $8.95 and the value of it dropped over time because obviously the system itself wasn't quite sought after at first. Now people are just collecting just to compulsively collect. Oh wait, I'm missing this bracket. I mean, some uh, Joshua pointed this out as well on the podcast. Uh, if you guys want to listen to that, very excellent point he made that there's people who want to fill the void to their collections, which it's just like, you know, it's like, what the hell? But it's just, it's sort of folks who just buy these games, never going to play it in their lives, and then they just flat out put it in their collection and it's never seen the light of day again. Which is, so whatever, at least the person bought it because they wanted it in their collection, they didn't want to resell it. You know, this conversation again is very much identical to the one from the podcast, I'll provide a link down there. And it just drives me batshit crazy. Now, this is the fact that one part that drives me batshit crazy. Folks who take advantage of other folks when it comes to reselling these games. It's it, it's folks who then look up on YouTube videos seeing top tens and all that shit. And then they try to do a fast one by marking up the price of every single game. And they act like, oh, well, the cost of living, blah, 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 blah. It's like, don't you have a job? Yeah. You paying your bills? Yeah. Then I guess the cost of living is pretty good in your end. Should it? You know, basically that kind of crap. But, yeah, it's it's just to me a really redundant thing that these people go about and they resell these games to outstandingly large prices for no reason. Because there's still plenty of these games. I see people who try to sell these, and this is pretty funny, of, um, what is it? Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt for like, uh, 25 bucks because they think it's worth a lot of money. Where there's other games that kind of merit a good value because they're actually really good games. For example, pull this one right here. Uh, the Adventures of Link, Zelda 2. And, oh, The Adventure of Link, what's called Adventures, I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, this has been through some hell. Ooh. But yeah, this game right here, really damn good. It's really fun, hard as hell. 
but again, really good. And people have been trying to sell this for crazy prices sometimes, and it's really been more common than you'd think. But then I, I kind of look forward and look at the prices for uh, Wii games or whatever else. And some of them still keep their price value because they're sought after. And it's, again, it's very weird and interesting, right? You have these games that are much more modern. You kind of see the principle of them keeping a high price. So then you see the supply and demand thing go back to the older games. It's just... And then, so then, therefore, you see folks who take the liberty to overcharge for some of these games, and then it becomes a staple that most of these games are just crazily overpriced. I mean, sure, yes, of course, you have games such as Earthbound, which are a little bit more scarce than you'd think. So, therefore, that's why it is worth so much freaking bank. And then you have Chrono Trigger, which is worth so much bank. So now it's a freaking treasure hunt for folks such as myself or whoever else to even find these games. When they do, it becomes a magical experience, which is sort of a positive thing, but then it's it just a frantic thing because it sucks. Because games that used to cost like 25 to maybe 35 max are now outrageously priced. And half these games don't even get circulated as often, so they come bulk. In most of these people's collections, they have like a gazillion copies of it, and then they overcharge for it too, which is like, what the fuck? You know, for example, you had that 25th anniversary for uh, Super Mario Brothers, the whole um, shebang, which is right up there. They have Super Mario Brothers All Stars 25th anniversary edition up there for the Wii. People were like buying 50 gazillion copies of those and just hoarding them, basically, and then overcharging for them on eBay, which is again uh, ridiculous. And, I don't know, I, I mean, to me personally, it just, the, the collecting, the, the vibe of collecting sort of diminished a little bit for me. I mean, I don't hate collecting, I like to collect still, but it just sort of now becomes less fun because of the fact of people coming along and just, you know, ta trying to take advantage of me or you, the next person beside you, because you want to relive your nostalgic moments. So then now you have people who go back on emulators just to play them, because that's just it. They want to play them. They don't want to be charged like $70 just to play a fucking game they remember from their childhood, which makes sense. I can kind of understand that. Uh, absolutely. Then you have the other people, like myself, who really like to play the game on the physical media. I love to do so. You know, for example, you know, grab the old... Game Genie put in some, you know, Japanese games such as, uh, you know, Gunstar Heroes and play it on there. Have a great time. But it becomes me outsourcing having to find a more affordable copy of the Gunstar Heroes to basically do so, such as playing the Japanese copy. So it just becomes madness. It just is flat out madness. And, like, I really wish that collecting has not turned into that but it has and unfortunately it just there's so many speculations there's so many theories behind why it is and why so many factual things on why it is which i understand some of it but then it doesn't mean it makes it right like it doesn't really make it that right i'm seeing people arguing well it kind of is you just gotta deal with that mm, not necessarily you don't have to deal with it you can easily just walk away from it and you're fine which I'm not going to completely do. I'm just going to be very angsty about it, but that's basically all I can really do. I have to pretty much grip my teeth and hope I find an affordable copy, which is usually the, the standpoint here. Otherwise, people just cave in and go, okay, i got some expendable income. I'm going to throw $70 and then entitle this bastard is trying to inflate everybody else. Let's just do it, which is, it sucks. It just really sucks that people have to do that. And uh, basically, I'm very fortunate, at least a lot of folks here on YouTube are pretty fortunate that they got their copies of the games they have now at the prices they did, or uh, got games early before the price of them went <laughs> up to the freaking ceiling. <sighs> but, you know, this does take a positive turn for the most, and you're thinking, huh, how, what, you just talking about negatives. Well, the positives, at least, to this is... It makes it slightly more exciting. Sure, it does. I, I personally sit here and I look at games that I normally would not look at, like such as more affordable games, which I normally would not look at, even though some games are kind of common. 
And some of these that I'm holding in my hand here are pretty common, which is uh, the collection from Namco, which uh, which is um, A, C, and O are more sought after and are more expensive, so I end up getting just uh, N and M, and I play these from time to time, and they're really fun uh, compilations. I see them affect our arcade boards that are emulated to our compact disc, but eh, what can you do? <sighs> But yeah, what do you guys think personally of the said collecting um, history as well as the future we have currently today? Um, personally, it rubs me off the wrong way a little bit. It just does. I mean, at the same time, I'm slowly pushing myself into understanding about um, how this shit works. And now you just gotta work ten times harder, which is sort of heinous, but whatever. You know, a thing where it wasn't quite an issue before becomes one now with that said trading uh, fiasco with exchanging money for a video game to play on the console that you have hoarded in your collection for quite some time and you humbly pulled out, dusted off, and enjoyed. So, what can we do? I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, folks, what do you think? Take it easy, touch my nipples, see you later.